Hello and welcome back to the Beefy Tech channel. We're back on my 7950X3D system, finishing up a 30 minute run of OCCT. The reason we started up OCCT and ran it for 30 minutes is so I could show you something interesting. As you can see, I've got my undervolts here with my DDR5-6200 fully tuned kit, and I'm gonna open IDA64 Extreme, and we're gonna go in what is possibly the most intensive benchmark that you can do for a computer today, and that would be SHA-3. What I want you to take a look at is I click start and the benchmark begins and notice something interesting. I ran 30 minutes of OCCT and yet within roughly 10 seconds of running SHA-3, my PC indeed blue screens, which is actually insane that it literally took 10 seconds for this benchmark to crash my PC. Meanwhile, OCCT was stable for over 30 minutes. Now, don't you fret, I've done vigorous testing with several undervolts specifically to see how it performs. And as you can see, the undervolt I've been using for a long time now, it blue screened instantly. So I took it down to negative 10, negative 20, negative 8, negative 20, etc, etc. Checked it again. So it's really, really significantly down on the undervolt. And yet it blue screened pretty much immediately yet again. Then I went and I simply removed the undervolt entirely. So I just kept the RAM tune exactly the way it was before. Did nothing else in the BIOS. So I loaded optimized defaults plus RAM tune. Did it again. And this time, to my surprise, it actually passed the test when just the RAM tune was on, which does signify that it was indeed the undervolt and it was not the RAM at all during this entire process. Which is a good thing because I really didn't want to have to redo the RAM stuff, but this does go to show that it can actually show instability in undervolts extraordinarily easily. And if you might be thinking that this is a great thing because you've now officially got a really easy way to test your undervolts, I would disagree. Because over here, I decided to test something significantly lighter, which is just a flat negative 10, which obviously would run all day, any day, no matter the situation outside of SHA-3, because upon testing it, indeed, a flat negative 10 undervolt was not stable at all, and gave me a blue screen within about 30 seconds. I just skipped forward a little bit, and here we are. Blue screen 30 seconds into a men benchmark with a simple negative 10 undervolt, which is a bit crazy if you think about it, because if I've been playing completely stable negative 30 in games, not losing any performance and not having any crashes and stability issues, this means to be both SHA-3 stable and game stable, I would need to go to negative 5 all core undervolt, to be able to sustain SHA-3 benchmarks and gaming at the same time. I am of the firm belief that this benchmark is significantly too intensive to be representative of an actual gaming workload. And not only that, of just a generic workload that a day-to-day -day user would be doing. If you disagree with me, allow me to show you some research that I've done specifically to demonstrate that indeed SHA-3 is not really used in a lot of situations, even in enterprise solutions, all the more in gaming. For those of you wondering, I did look into what SHA-3 actually is, and it's essentially a secure hashing algorithm, and it's the third iteration of that. A hashing algorithm is essentially part of cryptography and meant to better secure systems and computers. To further explain it, you can essentially take a mathematical process and then output a completely unique string of characters of the same length. Now yes, this does mean it's essentially just an algorithm within cryptography. How would this apply to games? And the simple answer is that this algorithm indeed is not generally used in games. It has to be implemented by developer for it to actually run the algorithm. And as you can see, the implementations listed below are not related to gaming in any way. And apparently, in general, SHA-3 is rarely used. Now yes, this can depend and there might be the one-off occasion where SHA-3 algorithm would be used, but it would never be in a gaming application. So yes, it can indeed crash the computer and show that it is unstable in some situations, but no, you would never actually find a SHA-3 algorithm within real life, assuming you're just a simple gamer. Now yes, in an enterprise situation, assuming you're a company, this algorithm can be useful and you can indeed benchmark it for your systems if you're using an application that has SHA-3 SHA in it. But otherwise, SHA-3 would not actually replicate any real-life scenarios. To fully clarify what I mean by that, I mean that the exact workload that the algorithm puts onto the computer would never be met in a gaming scenario. Say you're playing Call of Duty, say you're playing Overwatch, that exact algorithm, algorithm that crashes the computer instantly on a negative 10 and above undervolt would never run. But virtually anything else other than that algorithm is perfectly stable on, say, negative 15, negative 28, etc, etc. And yet it's not stable on SHA-3, 
Well, you're still gonna be able to play games just fine, and you're gonna be able to do other tasks just fine, just not SHA-3, because it's that specific algorithm that you simply can't have undervolted as much. In the background, a perfect example of this exact scenario is running. OCCT ran stable for 30 minutes, as shown within the video over there. I opened up ADA64 and ran SHA-3, and within literally less than 15 seconds as I speed forward through this, the PC crashed and blue screened after it ran perfectly fine for 30 straight minutes on OCCT without a singular error. Mind you, I have been gaming on the exact undervolt that you've seen in just the previous video for months on end and I've had very minimal issues. Mind you, I do reset my computer quite often, specifically because I need to run tests, but I've had no issues with that undervolt outside of SHA-3, so that's why I wanted to take a look at it. Luckily, you don't need to use SHA-3 for performance testing, specifically because it's not applicable to gaming, video editing, or any normal use cases outside of its niche hashing algorithm situation. And in that scenario, the only thing that it'll be tied to will be the benchmark anyway, so you can just forget about it, ignore it, and use OCCT, Cinebench, and the usual stuff that you would use for CPU testing. With that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and I hope that you would consider liking and subscribing if this was helpful. I did also want to mention for those of you that don't know that I offer PC optimization services and the website that I was offering them through has recently gotten a small overhaul as I've gone through it and edited quite a bit. So if you guys do need help with optimizing or overclocking your PC, check the link in the description. Make sure to have a good day and enjoy.